When it comes to measuring distances, there are various ways that we can do this. We can measure the distance between two points with a ruler or a tape measure, or we can use our car's odometer to tell us how many miles or kilometers we've driven, or we can even use Google Maps to tell us the distance between two separate cities. We can also bounce signals off of an object that we're observing. But when it comes to determining the distances to the stars, this is probably one of the hardest things that astronomers have had to figure out how to do. How can we tell how far away something like a star or a galaxy is located? I mean, we can't just take a ruler and stick it up to the sky and hope that it'll give us a reliable measurement of the distances to these celestial objects, nor can we actually go there ourselves and use a spaceship's odometer to get these measurements. Over the many centuries that astronomers have been studying the skies, they've actually developed methods to determine the distances to the stars. In this course, we'll cover a handful of these methods, primarily stellar parallax, spectroscopic parallax, RR Lyrae and Cepheid variable stars, and type 1a supernovae. But in this unit, we'll focus primarily on stellar parallax alone. In order to understand stellar parallax, we first need to understand the concept of parallax in general. You've probably experienced this at some point in your life by looking at something directly in front of you with one eye open and one eye closed, and alternating which eye stays open and which one is closed. If you kept both eyes open and looked directly at a row of highlighters in front of you, you would probably see a view looking something like this. But close your right eye and now your brain begins to receive signals from only your left eye which sees this view instead. The reason for this is because our brains interpret sight by receiving signals from both eyes simultaneously. Our right eye perceives a specific view of what's in front of us, and our left eye receives a slightly different view of the same scenery. So only when we use both eyes to see do we actually get depth perception. And if we keep alternating opening and closing one eye or the other, we'll end up noticing that some of the objects in the foreground seem to shift more noticeably in our field of view, than the objects that are further away. This effect can also be seen while driving down a long stretch of highway. You'll notice that the features in the far distance are moving much more slowly than those right beside the road. We can now apply the concept of parallax to how we see the stars. Stellar parallax is a phenomenon in which we see an apparent shift in the position of a star among the background stars because of the change in Earth's position as it orbits the Sun. It looks something like this if all the stars in this image were located about 5,000 times closer than their true distances. So really, the effect is amplified in this animation, but it gives you a good idea of what stellar parallax means. So let's see how stellar parallax is actually observed and measured. Here we have a star, the star, and we're going to measure the distance to this star. We'll have to use the background stars as reference in observing the parallax of this star. Now this blue star is located very, very far away, so far that whether we measure the distance from the sun or from the earth doesn't really make a difference. In fact, most stars are so far away that we usually measure their distances from the solar system rather than specifically from earth, since the change is so insignificant it could be ignored. Now if we observe this blue star once in June and again six months later in December, we would notice the apparent position of the star against the background stars will have changed. This is the apparent parallax of that star and we use it to find the distance d by doing a little bit of trigonometry. Notice how if we just bring in the distance from the Earth to the Sun, which is one astronomical unit into the picture, we can create a triangle to help us find the distance. Now the last bit of information we need for this purpose is the parallax angle P, which is half of the apparent parallax that we observed in the shift of the star's position against the background stars. Now we can do the math and figure out a relationship between the parallax angle P of the star and the distance D that it's located at. But to figure out exactly how to do this math, we'll start with some trigonometry tips. When you have a right triangle, one angle is 90 degrees and the other two will add up to total 90 degrees as well. But what's worth noting here is that if you just pick and stick with one of the other two angles, represented here by the Greek letter theta, you'll have a side that's adjacent to the angle, a side of the triangle that's opposite to the angle, and the hypotenuse will always be the side that's opposite from the 90 degree angle. Identifying these sides is important in order to understand which trigonometric function we'll have to use in our triangle. Now the trig functions in question are sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine of theta is defined as opposite over hypotenuse. 
Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. To really see which function we'll need to use, let's rotate this triangle so it resembles the triangle we were previously dealing with. Notice how the trig functions on the right remain the same. So regardless of the orientation of the triangle, as long as you've identified the adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse of the triangle with the angle you're looking at, the functions don't change. So we can use them here in our triangle too. Notice how our angle here is P, the parallax angle. It's no longer theta, but the concept remains the same. Opposite to this angle is our Earth-Sun distance of one astronomical unit, and the adjacent side to the angle is the distance D to that star. This means that the tangent is the best trig function for us to use. So we have the tangent of the parallax angle P equals the opposite over the adjacent sides of the triangle. So we get tangent P equals 1 AU over the distance D. But this distance D is so big that this triangle gets stretched out incredibly. So much so that we can employ the small angle approximation which says that the tangent of the angle P is pretty much the angle P itself. This simplifies our equation and we get the parallax angle P equals 1 AU over the distance to the star D. So now as long as you know the parallax angle of the star, you can find its distance.